Hey, what's going guys? Welcome back to my channel. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing about that how we created this whole scene inside of Blender. So, this as this is the third part, we'll be discussing about the whole environment, including the gobos, the lighting, and everything like that. Now, in our last two parts, we discussed about the materials and then the and then uh, the whole geometry node setup. So, make sure to check it, check them out, then then come to this episode. So, without further ado, let's just start with today's tutorial. Okay, so now coming back to the Blender window, let's discuss about that how we went about how we went about creating this whole scene. So let's discuss about the most basic thing, which is the lighting here. And I just uh, made it using just one add-on, which is called the Real Sky add-on, and it is really simple to use. If you just install it once, and if I just go over to the render view mode, and I just turn on the sky sky option, and then I just play around with some of the settings, and as you can see here, we have a pretty great looking sky box. Now this was hidden in the file render as I have, uh, if I just go over here, I have turned on transparent so the background or the sky is invisible. But uh, in the final, uh, but in the final result, I just uh, in the post processing, I just added the uh, sky image and I changed some saturation and things like that. We'll be getting to it. Next up, let's discuss about the lake. So if I just go to the shader editor over here. As you can see, it is a really simple node setup. First of all, we have a texture coordinate node, and it is connected connected into the mapping node, and then it is connected into the noise texture, and then it is connected into the bump uh, node, and it is uh, going into the normal output and the principal PSTF and uh, to the material output. Now, in the principal PSTF, I have changed the color to almost black, and I've set the roughness value to completely zero and I have increased the transmission so that light can pass through it very easily. Like for example if I just decrease it as you can see here it adds a slight difference so I just recommend you to turn it to uh, uh, switch this to one. Now as you can see here this is the whole setup and it is very simple. Now if we talk about the bump node if I just uh, as you can see here I've set the value to a very low value which is a 0.017. But if I just increase it to 1, as you can see it gives us a very weird looking result for whatever and it really just looks bad. So I would just recommend you to switch it to a very low value like 0 0.017 or you can even go lower or higher depending on your pref preference. But I would recommend you to look at references and then copy and move along uh, and make your textures like that. Now if we talk about another thing, first of all let me just turn off the transparency to make it more clear as you can see here there is a plane now why is this plane here this is because uh, i am faking the shadows of the clouds which is also known as gobos gobos are basically used to fake shadows of particular things for example if you're in a forest you can add a gobo for example uh, you can just add in a plane and then uh, just add in a gobo material which we'll be getting into uh, in a bit and then you can just play it in your animation and, and, and animate it so that uh, you can get fake shadows and save your VRAM and basically get a much nicer result than using an actual object. It just adds a more, bit more realism as well. So as I'm not using the clouds and I'll be just adding in the sky and the clouds in the post, -pro post processing later on. So just to fake the shadows of the clouds, I just added this plane and then I've set and I've made it a gobo material. So if you just go over to the shade editor, as you can see, it is really simple. Of course, you can go very overboard with it, but for my scene, uh, I think that it, it was pretty great, and it was enough. So if we just, uh, for example, first of all, I just switch the camera value, and I've just turned on off the camera value in the object properties tab. So I'll be just turning it on for demonstration purposes. So as you can see here, this adds very fake clouds and very fake shadows to it. For example, if I just hide it, as you can see, all of the shadows on the river and on the rocks just go away. And it just adds a bit more realism. And as you can see, it is really simple. So first of all, we have a noise texture. And you can see all of its values over here. And then going over to the color ramp. And then into the principal PSDF and then into the material output. Now this color ramp is into going into the alpha channel of the principal BSDF as we need to specify to the Blender software that hey, we have black and white values. So just uh, 
uh, search the uh, black values uh, and turn the black values to complete transparent and turn and just make only the uh, white values visible so as you can see here this is using the linear values so we can just even change this to constant if you want to get a constant result but of course this doesn't really look that great of course you can just play around with the settings but i believe that switching it to linear adds a bit more realistic effect to it so talking about the last thing which is post processing so as you can see here if i just go over here First of all, if I just go over here, as you can see here, this was completely transparent in the final render, which was the raw output of the Blender render. So after that, I just added in this very nice image from the internet. You can just choose any, which is copyright free. And then if you're using it for commercial purposes. Now, after that, I just played around with some settings like I added in a vignette. I think that it ha that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, but it is basically VIG. Uh, N E T T E. So it just adds dark. Uh, uh, so it just makes the corners of the your image darker. And I played around with the vibrance, the saturation, the dehaze value, and I also play, played around with the temperature. Now in the temperature, I just change it to a bit more colder value because it is a uh, colder scene and a snowy scene. So it makes sense to for it to be a bit more bluish. Now. If I just go over here, as you can see, here, there's a bit more bit of noise, and it is and it isn't very clear. Now, if I if I would compare it to the final raw output, it is very clear and the clarity is very high. But I just made it a bit more smooth and a bit and I added very slight bits of noise in the final result in the post processing. Why is that? Because that is because uh, doing this will add a bit more realism to it, as your real world cameras aren't perfectly clear clear and don't capture perfect clarity pictures so just to replicate that thing i just turned on this uh, smooth value and i've just added very slight bits of noise as you can see here and uh, as the cgi render is very sharp you, you should do it if you are going for realistic renders so yeah guys i guess that is pretty much it for today's videos and we're meeting in the next one so see ya